Hey there, Poindexter. Welcome to another episode of the Star Wars Minute. It's your daily podcast in which we analyze, we scrutinize, and we celebrate the rise of Skywalker one minute at a time. I'm Alex Robinson from alexrobinson.fun. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. And I'm Ken Plume from KenPlume.com. Still not that fun. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that's not true. You're plenty of fun, Ken Plume. Hmm. And thanks for returning to the program. Thanks yes. for having me back. Um, This is it. Minute 47, the one you've been waiting for. Minute 47 starts off with an alien coming out of his house. Or a door. I don't know if it's his house. An alien coming out mm. of a door to see what all the hubbub is about in the streets of Kajimi. And it ends a minute mm. later with Poe asking Zori Bliss if she's still mad. Hmm. Um. This uh, this alien. Let's talk about this alien. I thought of you when I watched this minute, Alex, because I was like, oh, because there's multiple eyes, there's, the glasses there's joke. There, yeah. <laughs> no, I was like, there's that. Uh, there's that uh, one of those alien voices that Alex doesn't like. Yeah. Because he comes out and he's like, <laughs> and I'm like, that's all the all the alien voices. Not all of them, but uh, far too many of the alien voices. I nowadays. wasn't aware. Of that. What is your issue with the blah blah blah? It just seems like everyone talks in that same like a like you know with no effort put into trying to make words or or come up with a different sound. It's just like a deep voiced deep voiced hamburglar too, doing all the. Do you voices. think that's a a more modern issue? Well, when do, when do, what have you noticed it more in? When has I, it become a thing for you? Well, I think it's I definitely notice it more in the sequels than in the other ones but i think this is also like in the original movies we didn't really have too many aliens showing up as background characters you know, other than the cantina they were very limited in the number you know there was java's palace the cantina and a tiny bit of the bounty hunters so we didn't really have a lot of aliens reacting to stuff in, or in they the, didn't vocalize yeah or it was just part because of a general hubbub you'd have, of, of you'd have I to mean, pay them and make sure yeah. they were in the union but it, yeah exactly Right in the cantina, though they we did have a lot of different sounds. Anytime we focused on somebody, you know, they had a different kind of yeah sound. And far to to Alex's point, far too many of the it's like oh we see a, a crazy new creature and but their voice is just like blah, 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 blah. like yeah. But in the cantina, in each of their own languages, they were just saying hi because it was a roll call. <laughs> mm. There you go. <laughs> they're just it's like the scene in Goodfellas where they're all just yeah. Saying, so if like, you want your Rosetta Stone, right. yeah. uh, Star Wars languages, <laughs> that's how they say hi. There you go. In I every remember language. everybody. There was Feltapern. There was Hammerhead. Everyone was through there. Through the whole thing. They called him Hammerhead because his head was shaped like a hammer. <laughs> so you appreciate when time is put in to developing what the individual sounds of a, a given species language is, rather than what you view as a generic. Or at least go get different animal sounds instead of just, yeah. you know, do like bird calls or do other, there's a ton, there used to be a ton of other animals on earth that we could do, copy sounds. Is it because from. JJ also voiced the, is that, <laughs> I'm sure it was one of the beastie boys in that costume. But, uh, um, now, I have information about this alien. Do you have information about this alien? I have some as well. I will let you go right. first. I'll see. No, I'll, I'll let you go because mine is minimal. So okay, well, oh, unless you have more, then maybe I should go. Yeah, first, you should go first. Minimal, I'll so. do clean up for what you don't cover. All I have is uh, his name and his race. Okay. Um, he is a Busodian. Busodian. Busodian drinks a little. <laughs> <laughs> Bo- a little. He mixes his booze with soda. He's a he's a rum and coke guy. Mm-hmm. Seven and seven. Um, to bring it back to good fellas. Uh, Busodian named uh, uh, Amunsi Tidian. Tidian. Honest to God, Tidian. Yeah. Tidian. <laughs> That's what I thought. Um, yeah, uh, 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 it seems like that's probably somebody being Tuckerized, but I don't, we don't, I don't know. Yeah, it seems but close then, to it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I didn't look it up on the... Well, I have a little bit more well, information. You- well, yeah, first of all, is there, full, about is there a full uh, <laughs> databank Wikipedia or is uh, it straight out of the... Yes. There, a month C, there you go. Can you see he in there? He gets a page. Yeah, kind of. He's out of focus, but he... Oh, 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 there you go. Yeah, he's got he's got 20 eyeballs. He's got 20 eyes in his head. He's got 20 They're eyes. He's same. a forger because everyone on the planet is only involved in criminal operations, so he is a forger. Sure. 
can he work on 20 different forgeries at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is the weird, but there's a lot of weird parts of it. The, the one weird thing is that he has 20 eyes and he thinks he can be, he thinks he can also see the future with a non-existent 21st eye. Wow. So I don't know if he just has suffered brain damage <laughs> from, from being on Jimmy or whether he genuinely is having this kind of, uh, Thing, but or if this is, a, is this a nascent force power that he's seeing stuff, you know, mm. a la Luke, a la Luke in uh, Empire, and he's. I think, think, I think these are the moments mm -hmm. with the visual dictionaries <laughs> that we can take a moment to appreciate. Uh huh. When you just need to fill, and you're <laughs> you're just super creative, but also super tired. It's the middle of the night. You've had seventeen Red Bulls. You just need to finish these entries. They've sent you another photo of a background alien and said, put it in there. Yeah, make something And you got to come up with something. And you notice he has a bunch of eyes. Why not give him a 21st? Let's make it fun. Blackjack. Well, uh, the, he, uh, it's not just coincidence that he has 20 eyes. This character was originally designed, uh, an earlier version of the script, he was going to be basically Bulio's role. He was going to be the person, the person, the, the, what is he, a Busodian? A Busodian? He was the Busodian who was going to come and tell the Resistance about the giant fleet of Star Destroyers. Mm. And they didn't know whether to believe how many the Star Destroyers there were because he thought he was multiplying by 20 because he has 20 eyes. Mm. <laughs> Seems like a weird thing, like... Wouldn't people have noticed if he always exaggerated things? You always have to, anything he says, you have to reduce it by 25%, you know, to, yeah. because he, he multiplies but everything. But couldn't have 20. had the moment of the beheading by the First Order because he would have seen that coming with his 21st. <laughs> and he can there see the go. future, too. So, yeah. So, uh, Does that mean he also made it off planet before what happens to this planet at the end? Unknown. I don't know. Um, but apparently, what's so, the point of a twenty-first? Does it see like three <laughs> seconds in the future? What is? <laughs> Maybe that's what happened when he opened the door and he's like, blah, 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 and suddenly he had a vision of what was going on. He's like, "We gotta get out of here!" And then ran back in to start <laughs> packing his bindle. Um, I mean, it's a great but, double take as far as comedy double takes of yeah. what should be a frightening moment of First Order stormtroopers getting close to Poe. This this seems like a scene played mainly for comedy. Yeah, like I, think, I don't feel. I don't feel like I should be stressed. <laughs> That's what it was. He was he was opening the door because he heard them knock, but he heard them knock in the future. So he was like, yeah, so, oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> and then Damn kids. he popped his head out. Are we screwing up his cue? <laughs> and then he comes back. He's like, okay, that hasn't happened yet. That'll happen soon. He's like Dr. Manhattan. I'm answering the door 20 minutes in the future, honey. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yes. So apparently, uh, once that's that once Bulio was uh, was used instead of this alien, JJ liked the alien so much. He's like, "Well, we'll just put him in the let's just put him in this scene." I, I think it's cool that he has twenty eyes. So let's put him in there. Can you cannot tell that he has twenty eyes from 90, 90 mm. yards away. But uh, still glad well, that they're all the same. If you would, t you had to tell me those were eyes. I just yeah. thought they were weird, sort of bubble heads, Raisins. little <laughs> bubbles on his head, not yeah. eyes. Zits. Well, he's lumpy. He's lu he was to me. He's 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 lumpy boozian. No. Lumpy is a different guy in a different job. <laughs> <laughs> also, didn't see it coming. <laughs> so yeah, uh, he is played by Nick Kellington. Mm. Uh, Nick Kellington, who I'm guessing is one of these guys who works in the creature shop because he also played a uh, Bistan, the mm. angry monkey we saw in Rouge mm -hmm. One. So if you yeah. notice any similarities, these two characters, that's why. Nick Beck Kellington. Hmm. Do you think they mold these to their heads just so they can say, well, now I got to play it? Ah, it's smart. If they were <laughs> right. smart, they From do the creature that. shop. They're like, oh, it doesn't fit you? Weird, huh? <laughs> or they only get people, everyone has to have the same size head and body who works in the costume department right. so they can. Well, your resume looks good, but stick your head in this hole. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's uh, Carrie Elways didn't show up in time to take the mold, so I just we went ahead. You didn't want to wait. I mean, we were on deadline yeah, for these totally, things, yeah. right? <laughs> Which but brings us back. I know we're not talking about we're not reopening uh, settled cases, but it does bring me back to Kit Fisto, who remember he was a uh, he was a carpenter working on set, and they're like that guy looks cool because he had big you know long dreads, and they're like that guy looks cool. He should be a Jedi. And like, all right, send him to the creature shop, and we'll we'll fit him with something. And they're like, well. We gotta put something on you. We gotta shave your head. <laughs> so, they, it's like it's like General Maydean's uh, beard. They they shaved his head to put on prosthetic tentacles that look like dreads to make him look like he did when he was a carpenter. 
And General Medine, of course, you know, they liked him. They saw him in something. They liked him because he had a beard. They're like, all right, come down to set. And he shaved the beard because he thought that they wanted him to. The only you know, reason we hired up. you was that beard. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's a path to stardom. Harrison started out so, as a carpenter, too. Yeah. <laughs> I know another Here's carpenter, that carpenter today who, who, hmm. who went on to change the world. <laughs> yeah. Karen. What well, um, a cup of a carpenter. <laughs> Um, Carrot card. So along along the lines a little bit of what we were talking about yesterday with this feeling like a very kind of enclosed space mm-hmm. and almost like a set. Uh, my notes continued for that today because this, not only is it a closed set, but you kind of see like spotlight all the different things going on and each one is like happening in the thing. And I wrote, it's kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean, <laughs> the ride, oh, not the movie. <laughs> um, where it's just like you're going through and you just happen to be at the thing, you know, where like, they're like, all right, you know. You're wanted for questioning and pull them out, like just as you drive by, and you're like, oh. oh. <laughs> it's like a farce. It's like noises off. Right. In Star Wars. <laughs> it's like, look at the action going on over here while this action's going on over here. <laughs> Will they run into each other? Who knows? Yeah. Maybe. Now I wish this um, had been filmed on Sweet, in Sweet Haven, the uh, Popeye oh, yeah. town that was. <laughs> oh. Even Sweet Popeye Haven Village. felt more open than this. <laughs> Didn't didn't something happen to Popeye Village recently? Didn't it, it? I know it's been slowly falling apart for the last like forty years, but didn't it? Uh, don't say that's it. part of the charm. Did it fall I into the know. sea? Is that what? Mm. I don't know. I mean, all it would take is one bad storm. Yeah. To take that out. I mean, it was built as a set, not as a long term. Yeah. Forty five years ago. <laughs> yeah. And they were doing so much coke while they were building <laughs> that set. There you go. So I, they I built think it's in three days. A, there's missing a lot of nails. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. Anyway. C- hey. C-3PO wearing clothes. Yeah. <laughs> there's the, like, speaking of things Stealth that I want. Stealth clothes. A, Stealth clothes. Yeah. Speaking of things that I want, a, a, a classic kind of a 12-inch Hasbro or, or a sideshow action figure of. C-3PO in a coat. I mean, show us the toy. You can buy Ken. a secondhand parka. <laughs> well, I'm looking at a, a six scale C3PO. Off but he doesn't have a coat. Doesn't have the coat. The coat yet. Mm. Yet. Mm, there you go. I will. I will find a six scale parka <laughs> and take a photo just for everyone with Star Wars minute. Everyone listening. A little will. snowy background, maybe. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, I love C3PO wearing a coat because it's like it. It is. So, uh, like, are they looking specifically for C three PO? And yeah, droids like, are common. So, and yeah. protocol droids are common. I he guess he's glowing yeah. eyes. What are you hiding? Well, like, we are in the he's outer visible rim from a distance, <laughs> and droids are rare on the outer rim. So maybe they don't want That's to call true. attention to the, especially a golden droid. He's got to be worth a fortune. Mm. But again, who are you fooling? Yeah, with a droid well, that has glow. They, they, but give him goggles. Give him something else you know, to oh, hide. Man. That he is a droid walking around. They should totally. Also, he's not wearing pants. They didn't give him pants. No, that would have been weird. Yeah, <laughs> he's Donald ducking around. <laughs> um, I do. Uh, I, maybe they thought he was just that that one really tall Jawa oh. from Star Wars. You know, they're like, oh hey, it's that the glowing <laughs> eyes. Yeah, yeah. Maybe <laughs> um, wearing droid bottoms is like a fashion. In that well, period, maybe bottoms. this it's not it's not suspicious at all. <laughs> Some guy dressed up as a droid over there. <laughs> they should totally have a human face mask that they could put over C three PO's head. Oh God, like a like that a looks like Anthony Daniels. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. there you go. And then he's got to do like then he's acting like with it. Then it's him yeah, with this like, like when, when the Joker Transter wipes off his Comic Con. Yeah, yeah. And his Walter White mask. Exactly. And then we get to see C-3PO imitating Anthony Daniels. Oh, look at me. Right. I'm Anthony Daniels. I hate Kenny Hello. Baker. I'm so human. Look, I'm Daniel Fatoni. <laughs> I I might as well write a book. <laughs> uh, sidebar, I just took out Anthony Daniels' autobiography out of the library. So nice. expect, a, right. expect a lot of uh, C-3PO trivia over the next week. <laughs> so mm. I s- slowly. As a, as also a- noted, didn't purchase it. Yeah. Book book or an audio book? I did the book book. I didn't think I could listen to a whole audio book of, of Anthony yeah, Daniels. The, oh, <laughs> the golden on. tones of Golden Tony. <laughs> Hope he does yeah. all the voices. <laughs> <laughs> he does imitations of all like Harrison Ford yeah. and, and that would be great. I should check it out. <laughs> all right. All right. 
sold. Question about C-3PO. Right. Sure. Uh, in Attack of the Clones, we saw that C-3PO is fully capable of speech and everything with his head off. Like when R2 is dragging his head across the sand and he's like, mm -hmm. this is such a drag. Mm -hmm. Did they consider just taking off C-3PO's head and bringing his head into Babu Frick? Mm. Or do these guys not know that he can do that because they weren't, or that was 50 years ago and they were. Listen, I, I did. I, I, when, when you very kindly invited me on, uh -oh. I didn't want, I told myself I'm not going to come on and, and I, I was, I'm not a fan of the film. Mm -hmm. but I'm not going to, you know, I don't say I hate the film cause it's weird to hate a film. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's the wrong use of, of hate in this way. Yeah. I can be disappointed in a film yeah. and it not be my favorite. I'm not kidding. I hope that I've grown and matured as mm -hmm. a person to where I'm not upset and I didn't want to come on and just be negative about, about the film, but there's a lot of things in rise of Skywalker that makes me wonder if they had watched any previous star Wars. Hmm. <laughs> Like just a general baseline knowledge, and everyone has talked about that they fly now thing as a, as an easy reference point for that. But it seems like some cursory things. Like it reminds me of the Hobbit films, in that mm. it felt like because of the drama that happened with Trevorrow and and having to find a filmmaker for this, and a compressed schedule and a set release date, that a lot of this see, feels first drafty. Like, it feels like a polished draft mm -hmm. wasn't done on a lot of the, like, a things could have been discussed and notes could have been given. Notes could have been incorporated. This feels very much like a, we just need to get this film together into a workable state that wraps all this up and makes the release date. Well, and also don't forget that I think originally the cut was at an additional 40 minutes longer or something like that. And Disney, and what is, do we know what's in that cut? Disney is, as usual, very tight-lipped about what... Uh, is it just them not able to find, like, the specific Allen wrench that takes his head off <laughs> in the moment, and that's why they have to bring yeah. the entirety of him with them? I think even if they had known that, and they very well might have, I think they just think it would just be too weird to be carrying around C-3PO. I think really it would be kind of funny, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like think it's one of those bowling moments. Bags. But then he has to give that heartfelt, oh, you're all my friends. And it would just be weird if there was just a head on the shelf saying Standing all that next stuff. to a Babu Frick. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I feel like they kind of need his whole body there for the for the emotion of it. But, um, hmm. Yeah, because he does. So, well, well, yeah, well, yeah, we'll save it. Uh, I'm assuming that maybe most of his battery power comes from his body and the, the head can last on its own for a little while. It's got like an emergency backup battery. Yeah. But most of his power probably comes from his torso and he wastes core. so much of it with talking endlessly yeah just <laughs> <laughs> maybe that was maybe the additional 40 minutes that was cut out was them leaving the ship with 3po's head and then they got close to the city and suddenly he was like Roll. and they're like oh we right. can't do this you ran out of batteries then we gotta go all the way back to the ship put his head back on and Although, then bring him out again let me amend my earlier statement because we as we saw yesterday bb8 can just run up to somebody and touch uh -huh. them and reach instantly recharge a droid mm -hmm. so I was Who thinking knows? that was more like jumper cables where he was just kind of giving that doosh, that shock. And then once he started rolling around, that would, that's how he thinking, keeps his power going. Uh, like a car. That's how cars work. And then work, he just right? rolls yeah. over to his sort of Roomba <laughs> charger. Yeah, station, oh. yeah. Roomba. Hmm. Um, um, but we all love C-3PO hey, in clothes. Yeah, C-3PO should always have, uh, mm -hmm. I want to see him in different outfits. I want to see him in a suit. Tuxedo, you think he just opened the door for him? Tuxy 3PO? You think he was, was trying on like Lando capes in the fountain later? Uh, well, that would be a, later? another cool thing. They're like, C-3PO, we got we to gotta bring you along with us. Hmm. But you you stand out a little bit. And then, din, 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 you know, musical montage of him trying on different oh, outfits. And yeah. everybody being like, <laughs> and then Ray being no. Like, yeah. I hope he gets um, a taste for it. And then when they make this Ray movie that they're talking about, when we see in the future, I, and I hope C-3PO is always wearing a full thing of clothes to pay on his head. I know I love, we always love talking about 3PO <laughs> wearing a wig, but. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think he'd just be like a straight up hat droid? Just various. Mm. Yeah. I'm sure he'd go through a hat phase. Yeah. Well, and a hat to keep the wig on too. That's oh, another yeah. I mean, Pete, combo. as a, as a hat aficionado, what hat mm. would you give C-3PO? 
Um, well, my first, you know, for irony's sake, it would be fun if he had one of those classic, like, 1981 Yoda hats that says Yoda on the front and has the ears sticking out. That would be funny. <laughs> those classics. <laughs> those classic. You remember that one? Um, him, like, a but now I'm trying to think of, like, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to go late, uh, I'm going to go Gilded Age gigantic ladies hat. <laughs> You know, the mm. big thing with th- like feathers right. and, and uh, hat like pins. Like going to the Ascot Gravat. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, I was thinking bowler, maybe, because he does have a little bit of that, like, you know, that uh, Laurel like and Hardy a, effect. A, like a boater? Like a straw hat? Oh, yeah. I could see him in a boater. Um, but I was thinking, like, like ball cap, like what sports teams would C-3PO be a fan of? What what would he support? I don't I can't Would he think or of... would he have gotten one for the design? With no appreciation oh, or uh, connection. Right. You would have gotten like a Cubs team. hat because it says yeah. C on it. Uh, he's like, hey, C, that's me. <laughs> and then some Cubs fan would yell at him for not, for not, yeah, exactly. shouldn't be allowed to wear that hat. <laughs> yeah. And he winds up becoming and, a Cubs fan just so he can wear the hat. Exactly. There you go. I like this story. Space most Jim people Belushi. become Cubs Jim fans. Jim Let's be, be fair. He'd be the Cubs fan. <laughs> um, Here's something I really do like uh, in this movie come, uh, that we see here is Zori's Bliss's gun. Mm. It's like a, I try to look at, try to see if there's a specific name for like, what's like a pirate pistol called? Flintlock? And, uh, yeah, like a flintlock pistol or like a blunderbuss pistol, which is sometimes called a dragon, but still like, there, it's like, you have to add pistol still to both of those because otherwise they're like, oh, you mean like a. Like a rifle, like a big yeah. The pirate one has that kind of curve to it, where it's it's not like a distinctive handle and then body or trunk. I don't know what that part the gun's called. <laughs> the top part where the bullets come out, <laughs> the barrel. <laughs> the, well, yeah, I guess the yeah. Anyway, the it end just, of the barrel. It's it, but the the pirate ones are like one long continuous curve. You know, I mean, right. they're not. It's not. Um, yeah, I like the guns too. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's a good one. It's not not necessarily a design that we've seen. I like her whole look generally. Um, yeah, that that unitard yeah. thing she wears kind of reminds me of the uh, those two characters who are pretending to be the 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 the, the Tanaka sisters. You know, Tanaka, kind of, oh, okay. Yeah. That, I, I don't know. You say Tanaka. The, from I the, say from the, can, from the you're talking about the Cantina. Yeah, sisters. Right. Yeah. Anyway, that's what it reminds yeah. me of, kind of. I only I only know it uh, as pronounced as uh, as Tonica because it's a huge thing in the Star Wars action figure community. Oh, okay. And that those two characters have not been released. I will defer to your su- oh yeah superior well, knowledge then. T- what, so was it Tonica? We were, we were, Tonica. Ta- ta- Tonica. Tonica. Like gin and Tonica. Got it. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. Yes. The not the the Tanaka sisters are the ones who uh, composed the music for uh, Donkey Kong and Mario Brothers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um the the I well to to Ken's point a bit well I don't know we know we've we've talked about the the licensing with the Tonic Assist that, that was why the, the why they're imposters now is because the the original uh you know extras who played them don't want to you know there was licensing issues and something yeah, release like that, forms so. and yeah 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 whole big things it's anyway a, but it's, it's a whole thing there are youtube did... videos galore yeah about exactly it. that's why jj abrams should have played the tonic Tanak- exactly t- ton- tonica sisters like harmonica yeah the harmonica, the harmonica sisters harmonica. ladies and gentlemen the harmonica sisters <laughs> <laughs> play the cantina theme <laughs> on open mic night yeah space lawrence wilk <laughs> um zori bliss they... looks very prequely to me Kind of. I to me, she looks a little bit um, like Buck Rogersy too, <laughs> not in a bad Wait, way. Which is that? I mean, I would say that's a similar aesthetic too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's like a sleek design, yes. and certainly yeah. the 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 bodysuit is very evocative of sort of a Padme's Attack of the Clones mm-hmm. look, uh, and the helmet. Very so maybe it's all she's dressed kind of like like a retro. Style. It's like it's like if if she in was our on her world, way to she a was dressed as like buddy. a like a flapper or something. You yeah. Know what I mean? <laughs> Although now it's not even. It's like from like what is that? What would that be? What's the what's the what's the year difference in years in in universe between Phantom Menace and Rise of Skywalker? It's like sixty five years. Well, oh, you guys are both <laughs> right in the same ballpark immediately. <laughs> so you, you, you've been thinking about this too much. <laughs> All right, so that would be like uh, it'd be like the '60s, maybe. So maybe she's wearing like a like a you know 
Woodstock, like hippie flower girl outfit. Yeah, that'd be less intimidating. I mean, I yeah. got to admit, when I first saw it, all I could think of was flapper? Daft Punk. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. She is Who, one um, Daft Punk. <laughs> and uh, she threatens uh, Popo's uh, asking her something, and she says, I want to see your brains in the snow. Aww. And I thought to myself, hey, if, uh, if, you're a, if you're a band out there, you're a musical artist, and you're looking for a name for your band, your brains in the snow... You do that, you got a sample built in already. You can just, like, you. So first of all, it sounds aggressive. sounds like a band name, your brain's in the snow. Like So if you're like a metal band or something, that works. Or if uh, you can use it ironically, like, a, you know, if you're like a soft kind of, you know, indie, like, you know, just like one one guy and a guitar kind of a thing. Um, but it's, your brain's in the snow, and then you got, boom, you, you get the sample from the movie saying, I want to see your brain's in the snow. It's like, you know, and then plus that, that uh, initialism that turns into why bits. That's a fun thing. Why bits? <laughs> <laughs> Your Brains in the Snow sounds like the album title to me, and Zori Bliss is the artist. Hmm. Well, could be. Zori Bliss. And now, <laughs> from, uh, from the new hit single, the hit single from her latest album, Your Brains in the Snow, it's Zori Bliss. <laughs> and, and the harmonica sisters. The wet <laughs> and the harmonica sisters. We could still have Zori Bliss. <laughs> um, <laughs> I could see Zori and, Bliss playing Coachella. I see that announcement right. in my head right now. Yeah. <laughs> and on this stage, we got Zori Bliss coming up. Is it a person that would or be a group? Fun. I think it's a group. I think it's more fun if it's a group called Zori Bliss. Yeah. That would be a fun thing to, you know, there's uh, there's those uh, online festival poster generators where it's like you put in the thing. And it would be fun to make it like a three-day festival. And it's just like like all the weirdo kind of background alien characters from the three Disney era movies. But just like in, so just what go was through the, the visual of the, dictionary. Of the 20... 20 and a 21. Uh, Amuncy I'd... Tidian. Honest Amuncy to God. Amuncy Tidian, Tidian is opening Tidian. for Zori Bliss. Right. <laughs> on the cantina stage at Coachella. <laughs> uh, Muncy Tidian sounds a little more like world music, I think. That would be good. It would be, uh, you know, it's uh, it's more, not less kind of like indie. It's a little more. more uh, Not jizz? Uh, well, no. <laughs> okay. That's that's tomorrow. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> you gotta go to the Newport Chiz Festival. I uh, the only thing I have left is some factoids about Carrie Russell, the actress who plays Zori Bliss. No. All right, should I do them today or should I hold on to them for tomorrow? Um, what, 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 bust bust some out today. All right. Well, I I was I've been referring to her as Felicity whenever, we, mm. and uh, it occurred to me if people don't know what Battlestar Galactica, if people don't know that uh, Starbuck was um. That uh, well, now I can't remember her name. The actress who plays right. uh, the Mandalorian, Katie Sackhoff. Katie Sackhoff. I was referring to her as Starbuck, and apparently people were like, "What are you talking about? Why are you calling her Starbuck?" So yeah, the odds of someone remembering that she was in a show called Felicity, even pr previous to that, are slimmer. So before this, she was on a television program called Felicity in 1990, a show created by J.J. Abrams, and um, it ran for a couple of years. Famously. She had a uh, long curly hair and in the middle of the second season, she cut her hair short and the show was swiftly canceled because everyone hated it. <laughs> she literally got death threats for cutting her hair on a television program. It was a weird time. <laughs> yeah. It was before really the internet was that big of a thing. So uh, it I was. guess it was, it was around, but it was AOL uh, message boards yeah. were a flame. Uh, Usenet and I, groups talk of it. <laughs> It was weird. We were all uh, up in arms over there. I, I have never seen a single episode of. Uh, yeah, nor have I. Apparently, it was all J.J. Abrams' fault because. Uh, Isn't the, Snap also in it? I, that oh, would not probably. surprise me at Isn't all. Got, yeah, he's uh, he's one of the. He's but one playing of the, Snap. <laughs> it's, it's like a time traveler. He just <laughs> shows up at different <laughs> points. But uh, anyway, apparently. Don't cut your hair. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, Felicity Russell and her friends were goofing around and she put on a short wig a, a bo little boy's Carrie wig Russell. Carrie Russell what do I call her? Felicity Russell Felicity, Felicity Russell yeah. <laughs> and uh, she took a picture and sent it to uh, saying oh I cut my hair and sent it to J.J. Abrams thinking that it would scare him and he was like would you really consider cutting your hair for the show and so he's the <laughs> one who told her to do it and then she's the one who bore the because she the was brunt. playing a college student and the, thematically it made sense that she would do a wild thing like yeah, change sure. her entire look and yeah 
So, uh, and then I think yourself. That's what college is about. That's what the whole show is about. People don't understand that. That's what Felicity is. This is Felicity minute right now. We're going (laughs) too realistic. Uh, you, you know, you both are Marvel cinematic universe. Sure. You've seen the Marvel films in rewatching the movie, uh, rise of Skywalker. Now I, I could not get over how much Carrie Russell's voice sounds like Karen Gillan's nebula voice. Hmm. hmm. Yeah, I can see that. It was. It was just because it. It's. It. If you listen to it again with that in mind, it sounds very Karen Gillan Nebula. Oh, I can. I can <laughs> uh, check that. It's out. sort of that. F- it almost seems forced, serious American yeah. accent. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, Carrie Russell does have a uh, not. I would Is say she? gravelly, but it's 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 a voice with a, a lower timber than right. than. Uh, and Remember? I think she even here. I think she's putting it even. Low, I think she's doing a voice, put, making yeah, it even lower. Yeah, she's doing an intimidating, so, yeah, voice. trying to sound tough. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I, I was just looking up. I'm like, what have I seen her in? And I think nothing. The American was You're also so, her no. very big series mm-hmm. that ran for many years. This is what I, I was doing in the background. I wasn't ignoring you. I was looking up Carrie Russell. I was like, hey, I know her from, and then going through her, her filmography here. Uh, nope, 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 nope. You just see Honey, I Blew Up nope. the Kid? That was, she debuted. Nope. She made her debut in that movie, and it made me wonder, how have they not rebooted Honey, I Blew Up the Kids, or whatever that, hmm. that thing was That called. was one of the Disney Plus announcements, was Rick oh, Moranis they- coming back to the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids franchise hmm. for oh. a new either one-off movie or series. That was one of those Disney Plus announcements that have sort of faded away. <laughs> oh, so this was a while yeah. back they announced this. It wasn't This like was one of the early, so we oh. got Rick Moranis back. Huh. Sort of announcements. Oh well. Yeah, I, I um. He's got great. The only other them. thing that I think I might have seen, I she was the voice. Uh, she was a voice in a in one episode of Arrested Development. So <laughs> a voice. That, yeah, she was a voice. She was the of, voice of Franklin, the, the widow car in oh, in uh, weird. So and one of the that, voices I'm, for Dio. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, so anyway, I want to see your brains in the snow. Anything else for minute number four, seven, 47, black 47. No. All right. That's all I got. I guess that will wrap up, uh, this particular minute. And, um, did you know, stop me if you've heard this before we do, we have all a right. Patreon, which, uh, helps support the show. Yeah. And, uh, recently because our viewers and listeners were demanding it. We started reviewing the Rebels show every Saturday until the new Ahsoka program. I have heard of Rebels. Do I stop you at that point? There you go. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Oh, and um, Alex, you don't even know this yet, I don't think, but we just, uh, 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 I think I messed with the settings recently, and and uh, I'm pretty sure that if you go to StarWarsMinute.Patreon now, which is what Alex is about to say, you can get a free seven-day trial of our Patreon uh, level, you where doing, you, the, you, the weekend edition you're giving away level. The store. You can, I know you can you can you can sign up. You get seven seven-day free trial of the the level that you can access our weekend edition shows, which is us talking about stuff and whatever else. There's hundreds of them on there for you to listen to. I don't think there's I don't think you can make it through listening to all of them in that seven-day trial. So I think we're safe. I don't even but, get that for being a guest on the show. <laughs> That's true. Look at that. We just uh, we send over a gift basket and uh, um, it's all droids and coats. Um, but uh, yeah, a free seven day trial of, of if you go to Star Wars Minute dot Patreon. So check it out. All right. Uh, yeah, Star Wars Minute dot com slash Patreon and join us here tomorrow for another regular plain old Star Wars Minute. Regular. regular.